Grace and Jill are engaged in very animated conversation. They are both wearing long gowns in keeping with the Renaissance Festival. Seating could be either two easy chairs or a sofa. So uh, we've decided on these gowns. Um, this way we can blend in and look the part if we have to step into different roles. Agreed. This Renaissance Festival is such a great way to raise funds for the hospital. We've taken care of tickets, advertising, and wardrobe. What about the entertainment? We have most of the actors for King Henry VIII's court, plus singers, jousters, Morris dancers, and most of the townspeople. We could still use a few more musicians. The Crashing Board Pub is going to be serving steak on a steak. <laughs> um, they'll also have meat pies, some sort of veggie entree, dessert pastries, and an assortment of both alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. Oh, we have the artisans and craftspeople selling jewelry, art, wood carvings, clothing, souvenirs. Most of them are locally made. Uh, what about the books and videos? Videos don't really fit into a Renaissance period. That's why we, I didn't want a tea room. The festival is supposed to represent Tudor times. Tea didn't appear in England until Charles II came to the throne around 140 years later. But the videos have been money makers, though. And we do offer both coffee and tea in the pub. Not everyone is such a stickler for historical accuracy, Grace. Uh, most people are just here to have fun. Are you saying I'm not fun? Well, my dear history nerd friend, you used to know how to have fun. Uh, do you remember when we came out to drink wine, buy overpriced souvenirs, and check out the men in tights? I must seem pretty pathetic. You just need to get back out there. I will, when I'm ready. There's no time like the present. I'm afraid of running into him. I'm afraid of running into you or me. I keep replaying it over in my mind. I'm having lunch at the Swiss chalet with the girls from the office. And one of them points to a table across the room from us and says, hey, Gracie, isn't that your boyfriend? And sure enough, it is. Only he's with another woman. And he has his arm around her. And then he kisses her. I try to be as cool-headed as possible as I walk over to them and I introduce myself. He looks as though he's in shock. And she tells me she's his wife. She seems really nice. I mean, she's smiling, but I can see by the look of pain in her eyes that she is here to make that connection. He's stone-faced. I feel totally humiliated as I realize that I'm the other woman, and I return to my table. At least none of my coworkers ask me any questions. That certainly wasn't your fault. Then why do I feel so guilty? Because you're a good person, unlike your sleazy ex. What do I do? Get him. I have a surprise for you, which should be arriving any minute now. What kind of surprise? You'll see. There's a knock at the door. She's here. Jill opens the door. A middle-aged woman wearing a headscarf and a vividly covered robe appears. Grace, meet Madame Desdemona. Good evening, darlings. Hello. I'm not sure what's going on here, uh, but it's nice to meet you. Oh, Jill didn't tell you. Darling, 
I am the fortune teller for your Renaissance festival. I read palms and cards. I am also a matchmaker if you're in the market for one. Fortune teller. I have to think if we can make that work. Uh, I definitely don't need or want a matchmaker, thank you. Madame Desdemona is really good. She gave me a reading and told me that Craig and I were soulmates. Jill, you and Craig have been crazy about each other since grade 10. You don't have to be a psychic to see that. I am the real deal, darling. I was born with a veil over my face. Now, now let me see your palm and I'll prove it. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, go on, Gracie. Live a little. <sighs> okay. Grace extends her hand toward Madame Desdemona, who takes hold of it and stares at Grace's palm. You are very creative and artistic. You have also had your heart broken. What did you tell her, Jill? Just that so you could do some cheering up. Uh, oh, nobody needs to tell me anything, darling. Uh, it's all here in your palm. Now, do you have any questions you would like to ask me? Let me think. Why does our Renaissance Festival need a fortune teller? I can answer that. Everyone enjoys having their fortune told. It's a great way to raise money for the hospital fund. Like selling those so-called historical videos? Exactly. Oh, I just love historical movies. Now my favorites are Mary Queen of, Queen of Scots and, and the other Boleyn girl. You do realize that those are mainly works of fiction. Well, wh what do you mean? They're about real people. Well, for one thing, Mary, Queen of Scots, and Elizabeth I never actually met in person. Really? I, I am so disillusioned. As for Mary Boleyn, most historians list her as Anne Boleyn's older sister, who was a courtesan at the French courts before she even met Henry VIII. She was hardly the innocent younger sister portrayed in the other Boleyn girl. Well, next you'll be telling me she didn't look anything like Scarlett Johansson. Oh. Uh, did, does it really matter? I'm surprised, Madame Desdemona. I'd think you would know all of this if you were a fortune teller. My area of expertise is the present and future, not the past. Look, uh, I didn't mean for this to become so heavy. It was supposed to be entertainment. I'm sorry. You're right, Jill. Madame Desdemona, you'd be a welcome addition to our festival. Thank you, darling. Uh, I shall not disappoint you. Should I make some tea or, or do we want to have a celebratory drink? Well, I have brought a special bottle for this occasion. Pulls the bottle of wine out of her tote bag. Oh, uh, that's very thoughtful. Here, I'll get some glasses. Thank you, Madam Desdemona. My pleasure. Uh, uh, Madam Desdemona, this bottle has been opened. It's my homemade wine, an old family recipe. Is this a good idea, Jill? An open bottle of mystery wine? Oh, brilliant idea. Uh, Madam Desdemona makes wine all the time. Uh, I'm sure it's mostly safe to drink. Mostly safe? Oh, it, it's like a handcrafted uh, Renaissance wine. Um, it's an adventure. 
adventure. Yeah, I think I'll pass. I don't want to insult your guest. I look, look, darling. I'll show you that it's safe. She pours a glass of wine and downs it. It's, uh, it's only been about 10 seconds since you drank it. But I, uh, I'm still alive. I have no ill effects. Yeah, I'm sure Madame Desdemona wouldn't uh, risk her own life. Oh, I, I am very health conscious. I do yoga and eat kale. You do? Well, well, I did. Uh, once or twice. Yep. I'm going to try some of your wine, Madame Desdemona. Jill pours herself a glass of wine, takes a sip, and smiles. Oh, it's delicious. Okay. Okay, I'll have some too. Grace sips it gingerly and gives Madame Desdemona a big grin. Mmm. This is really good. You know what? I'd like to propose a toast. Uh, to the Renaissance Festival. To the Renaissance Festival. Around the teeth and over the gums. Look out, stomach. Here it comes. Grace and Jill stare at her, shocked. Oh, just kidding, darlings. Uh, to the Renaissance Festival. Cheers. Now, mm. Mm. what still needs to be done to get the show on the road? Oh, I should check to see if the posters and the programs are ready to be picked up and if the food's all ordered. Now, uh, let me know if I can be of any assistance. We could use a few more musicians, especially if they can play traditional Renaissance era instruments. Hmm. I'll think about it. Uh, how is your young man, Jill? Craig? He's wonderful, Madame Desdemona. He's going to be pulling pints and serving food in the pub. Your soulmate, darling. My soulmate. Sorry, Grace. Gosh, this must be hard for you. That's okay. Life moves on. So I guess I'll have to as well. <laughs> oh, d d tell me about your ideal man, Grace, darling. Who, who do you find attractive? Ryan Gosling? Ryan Reynolds? Tom Hardy. Prince Harry. Prince Harry? Yeah. Yep. Grace has always had a thing for the ginger prince. Well, good choice. He is pretty gorgeous. Oh, no, it's more than that. Harry's been involved in so many worthwhile causes, like, like the Invictus Games and mental health issues. He cares and he gives back. He's also so devoted to his wife and baby. Kindness and honesty are big on my list and Harry seems to fill the bill. Well, when it comes to affairs of the heart, I believe you need to follow the Martini Principle. What's the Martini Principle? Deciding whether you want to be stirred or shaken by love. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely stirred. I've already been shaken. I don't want that again. Like this conversation is getting way too serious. Let's have some more wine. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm walking home from here. <laughs> but what about you, Madam Desdemona? Oh, well. Just a, a bit for me, darling, and then I'll make my departure. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
is there any equipment you need for the festival, Madam Desdemona? Oh, and, uh, and no, thank you, darling. I, I bring everything with me. Uh, I'll meet you here in the morning, Grace. Uh, we can head over to the festival site and see how things are progressing. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> well, my glass is empty, so I'll say good night now. Good night, Jill. If you do decide to let Madame Desdemona do a reading for you, results are guaranteed. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Good night, then. Are, are you afraid to hear what I have to say, darling? No, I, I just don't believe in that stuff. Well, what if you just look at it as a, a bit of fun? I could do that, I suppose. Let me see your palm again. How can results be guaranteed? Oh, trust me, it's a gift. So what do you see? Hmm. I see a great deal of passion, which you sometimes try to suppress. You are very capable and determined, which also means that you are stubborn. Now, is the Renaissance Festival your idea? It is. Jill teases me because I read history books for fun, especially about the Tudor period. She has more of an aptitude for the business end of things. That's very interesting. Um, by the way, your heart line shows a new person in the very near future. Isn't that what you're expected to say? I mean, isn't that what most people want to hear? Maybe your Prince Harry is just around the corner. And maybe this wine is getting to me. I think I'd better go to bed. Good night, Madame Desdemona. Thanks for the reading. Good night, darling. I'll let myself out. Oh, oh, before I go, uh, would you please write Prince Harry on this piece of paper? Uh, why? For future reference. Uh, that sounds crazy, but okay. Grace writes on the paper. Prince Harry. Wait a minute. Madame Desdemona? Madame Desdemona, where are you? <laughs> She's gone. Oh, I, uh, I'm just gonna sit back here and rest my eyes for a few minutes. Grace sits down on a sofa or large armchair and falls asleep. She is holding the Prince Harry sign on her lap. Fade to black. Lights come up. Grace is still asleep. A tall, athletic young man wearing a nightshirt with the initials HR enters the room. He appears rather confused as he looks around and finally comes to a stop in front of Grace. Uh, uh, my lady, my lady, are you well? Uh, what? Uh, am I dreaming? Uh, I believe that this is, in fact, uh, my dream. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have drunk all that wine. Uh, what wine? Where am I? And uh, who are you? Never mind that. Who are you? Uh, oh, what sorcery is this? Uh, I'm having a dream where my own subjects do not recognize me. Uh, what can it mean? 
Why am I still holding this piece of paper that says Prince Harry? Uh, uh, Prince Harry? Yeah. Uh, I am Prince Harry, or at least I was. My mother called me Harry. I believe I was her favorite. Your mother? Well, now that I am king, things are usually more formal. You are a king? What king? I am Henry the Eighth, of course. <laughs> okay. Now I know I've had too much wine. When Henry the Eighth looks fit and young and rather handsome. What are you saying? Why would I not be handsome? I'm not sure how I should answer that. Uh, come, come. This is my dream. I demand to know why I would not be considered handsome. Well, no offense, but you're usually portrayed as a fat, ugly monarch. The one who had six wives. Fat? Ugly? Six wives? Nonsense. I have only one wife, my Queen Catherine of Aragon. As you can see, I am fit from playing tennis, jousting and fencing, and riding. It is well known that I am fair of face and shapelier of calf, calf than the King of France. I can even grow a longer, thicker beard than the French King. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Queen Catherine does not like beards. Uh, under the circumstances, it is difficult to decide whether or not to shave it off or keep it. No doubt. Uh, uh, who might you be, my lady? Grace. Grace. What a lovely name. I must say, this is a very strange dream. It is different from any of my other dreams. <laughs> yes. It is very strange. Are you married, Grace? No. Uh, betrothed? <laughs> no. No, I am definitely not betrothed. Uh, how is someone so lovely still not wed? Uh, I'm not really interested in being wed. I'm quite happy being single. You sound rather bitter, Grace. Perhaps I am. I was deceived by a merry man, married man. He led me to believe he was single. Unforgivable. But what about you, your majesty? Do you not have a reputation with the ladies? Everyone knows that I am the king and I am married. There is no deception. I make the overtures and it is up to the lady whether or not she accepts. I suppose your wife doesn't understand you. Alas, I fear she understands me all too well. Are you and Queen Catherine unhappy? Uh, unhappy? No. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Catherine has not been able to bear me a son. Uh, we have our beautiful little daughter, uh, the Princess Mary, uh, but no male tutor to heir to inherit the throne. Why could your daughter not become queen? It must be a man. Uh, but your Queen Catherine is strong and capable. The daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain. You made her regent when you went to France. Oh, mm. She even defeated the Scottish king in your absence. Perhaps Mary shares similar qualities. Uh, it is not the same. Oh, we did have a son once, uh, Prince Harry, um, but he was born a few years ago on New Year's Day. What glorious celebrations there were in his honor. Oh, he was even made Prince of Wales. And then we lost him. Uh, our, our Henry only lived for 53 days. I am sorry. It must have been so painful to lose a child. It was very painful. Catherine turned to prayer, 
the consolation. Uh, I have learned to seek my comforts elsewhere. Is that the proper thing to do? I am the king. It is, therefore, the proper thing to do. What if Queen Catherine were to seek such comforts elsewhere? And betray the king? It would be high as treason. Heads would roll. That sounds like a double standard to me. Double standard? Um, I do not understand. And I don't know how I can explain it to you. Why would you think that a daughter should be able to inherit the throne? Obviously an idea whose time has not yes, yet come. I still do not understand. Are you a member of my court, Grace? <laughs> no, your majesty. Uh, then where are you from? I am from a faraway land many, many years in the future. The future? Perhaps I have had too much wine as well. This is by far the strangest dream I have ever had. It's strange for me, too. The, the truth is that I long to recapture the sweetness of romance that Catherine and I once shared. I may not agree with your methods, Your Majesty, but I sympathize with your need for that kind of closeness. Never give up on love, Grace. Love is life itself. I'm, uh, I'm starting to feel very tired. I'm sorry, but I, th I think I'm going to fall asleep. Good night, Your Majesty. Grace extends her hand to Harry, who kisses it. Good night, Grace. Grace sits down, curling her feet up under her, and goes to sleep. Harry exits, fade to black. Lights up. Grace is awakened by knocking at the door. She opens it to see Jill standing there. Good morning. Good morning, sleepyhead. I, I see you're already dressed. I'm just heading over to the festival site. Did you want to come with me? I had the weirdest dream last night. I'm still trying to wake up properly you go ahead i'll catch up with you i can wait if you want me to no thanks uh i need to pull myself together and get organized it might take a little while are you sure oh, i'm sure okay see you later see you jill Grace starts to walk back to her room when there is another knock on the door. She opens it to find a young man who looks just like Harry from her dream. He is carrying a musical instrument case. It can't be. Uh, hello, uh, are you Grace? Yeah, but y you are... I'm Harry. Harry? Uh, Prince Harry? <laughs> no, just plain Harry. I don't understand. Uh, I'm sorry, I should explain. Uh, Aunt Mona said you need musicians for the Renaissance Festival. Uh, I play the recorder and other woodwinds. Uh, well, I can also play the lute. Really? Oh, oh that's wonderful. Oh, we need you. Wait. Who's Aunt Mona? Oh, she's the fortune teller for the festival. Madame Desdemona is your aunt? <laughs> That's right. Have, have we ever met before? Uh, I don't think so. Well, unless you've been for an ambulance ride lately. Uh, I'm a paramedic. Uh, because I'm single, I usually get asked to work... Uh, weekends for my co-workers and trade shifts. Luckily, I'm not scheduled to work the weekend of the Renaissance Festival, and I intend to keep it that way. <laughs> and your name is Harry. 
just like my grandfather. Uh, he's the one who taught me how to play the lute. He and I are the history buffs in the family, and we both love Renaissance music. So, so what's in the case? Oh, my recorder. I'll have to get special permission from Grandpa to borrow his lute. Well, that would be amazing. Let's hope he says yes. I'm pretty sure he will. He wouldn't miss a chance to critique my performance. <laughs> Harry, I have to head over to the festival site, but I think I need a coffee first. Oh, I'll walk with you if you like. We can stop at Timmy's on the way. That sounds great. Uh, let me just grab my thing. Grace picks up her purse and some papers, then she and Harry depart together. After Grace and Harry have left, Madame Desdemona enters the stage, faces the audience, grinning. Results guaranteed. 